Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another Brood War ladder battle. It is Bishop this time in the top right hand corner versus Hero down in the bottom left, who appears to be going for a 12 hatch. Bishop here opening up with his supply depot and barracks at the front. We're going to see a little wall in with that tiny hole. And it is cross map. So this should be a fun match. I'm always down to cast some hero replays. One of my biggest inspirations is the Zerg player. Him and Solki. So much talent in these two. Sending out his first drone after the hatchery has been placed. Pretty standard stuff here from hero. He's not going to get the fastest scout in the world. Sometimes you'll see players... Extractor trick out the 10th drone and then make an overlord and send the 10th drone to go and scout It puts you just a slight bit behind where you'll be with this build Heroes a little bit more macro focused, but you will be able to get across the map in time to see if it's an eight racks um, Maybe even stop that SCV from building if it's a, a CC first, you could even stop the SCV from building that CC, which could be a huge win. Now, he's not even going to get in here, but it doesn't matter. He's seen all that he needs to see. Sending that drone back home now. He knows that it's a one Rax fast expand. And that he needs to do nothing. Oh, wait, wait, oh, that drone. Oh, this is big. Hero's making a really huge mistake right now. Let's see how long this lasts. This is such a rare problem. Okay, there we go. He finally does notice it. We'll go ahead and get that going again, but you can see his minerals and gas are just off. 304, he's finally going to start that. And that was definitely a mistake. That layer gets started. Starting to produce some lings. At the highest level, small play plays like that can actually cost you the game. Small difficulties in your early opener can absolutely cost you the game. And this is no pushover that he's playing against right now. Bishop has qualified for ASL several times in the past. He's a very strong contender. Dangerous Terran player to be messing with. And he's going to start to push out here with some Marines. He's actually going for a plus one play. Going to catch that Ling with four Marines start to push across the map. How many Lings do we have popping now? Let's see if he's going to get in here. Oh, I don't see any as I don't see any links being made two more sets get started the 2.5 hatch begins as well These Marines thinking about going across the map looks like they're gonna turn around though Head on back home hoping that they forced at least a few extra links to be made here and indeed they did force two sets But haven't really slowed down this build too much from hero by the looks of it. He's got his Spire on the way. His third hatch is here. His gas coming up. Five more drones in production. His economy is in full swing now. The plus one has begun. Extra barracks going up. How many barracks will he go for after this? Because I've seen plenty of different ideas out of Terran players recently. Some will go for three racks. Some will go for five racks. Four racks also viable. But it really depends on how much pressure you want to put out on the map and how quickly you want to get your tech going. Looks like going right up into four racks. Will he throw down a fifth? Has the money for it. So he's going to start commsats instead. Double commsat going to be coming down in just a moment. He's already scouted most of everything, so he actually doesn't drop the second commsat. Pretty smart heads up play here from Bishop. Knowing that he just needs confirmation on the timing of the Spire. And with that, he knows that there's no... Uh, Mutalus play coming in, or sorry, uh, Lurker play coming in. He knows that it's Mutalus play. There's the scam. He sees the eggs are morphing. And he knows that he needs to start his turrets right away here. So he gets the turrets online. Not quite as close well a lot of Terran players will cut it a little bit closer here they won't start their turrets until the mutas are halfway across the map or on the way across the map so they're just popping out and they're just popping out now but most of these turrets are already done so a player like rush we oftentimes see him building the turrets at the very last moment a player like light as well 
Like the turrets will finish just as the Mutalists are arriving. Got a pretty big group of Mutalists here, but it seems like Bishop is fully prepared. Diving in, picking off a couple of Marines so far. Let's see what happens with these first Mutas. There are seven able to one-shot those SCVs, so a pretty dangerous group. But as the first Mutalist gets picked off, the SCVs are no longer as threatened. We're gonna have to take two shots to finish those off now, so he actually, oh, Ling's diving in there. Okay, he got two kills on two turrets. That's actually huge. Kind of missed that. Two turrets get picked off while Bishop's dealing with the Mutas inside the main base. This is a problem with not building a bunker here at the front. Just small stabs of Lings can get in there and deal quite a bit of damage. We've got six Mutas left in this stack. Just enough to one-shot Marines. But more are going to be joining the pack now. You can see Hydralis Den has started. The third base is ready. It's going to be uh, getting saturated here shortly. More Lings coming out. Hero has been leaning uh, into this type of play more and more often uh, recently. Going into... Ooh, loses a Muta there. That's a little bit unfortunate. Leaning into the Soul Key style of uh, Ling and Muta defense to stop these Bio Balls from coming across the map and dealing damage to them. Now, the Bio Balls kind of split right now. You can see a lot of it is on the south side, went around this doodad here. But Hero not able to take advantage of that. He's waiting for a critical mass of Lings and Mutas to overwhelm this position. Seems like Bishop is a little bit indecisive in which direction he wants to take this. He's got to let his medics heal up. A lot of these Marines are kind of low right now. They are getting healed, finally. But the Ling number has grown dramatically. A little bit of a supply block here for Hero. As he loses two more Mutas, though, that's going to open up. His Hive is on the way. That Overlord comes all the way up to the front here. Look at him not quite controlling his Overlords properly. What you like to do is keep sending Overlords back so they never make it across the map. But he's kind of uh, whiffed that a little bit. Now he's going to dive on top of these reinforcing Marines. He's going to get a bunch of kills with these Lings. Should be backing off now, though. Can't get too much more out of this. He doesn't want to lose all the Lings as well before the Mut Mutas come to join this fight. He's almost got enough, I think. As long as he takes a really good engagement with the Lings, he might be able to wipe this out. This is not the right placement, though. These Lings are not going to connect very well with the Marines. And look at that. They get wiped out immediately. Hardly getting any damage as the Mutas were trying to micro there. He is diving on top of this reinforcing group of Marines. He shoves everything back. And he should be able to get Hydralis on the high ground over here to defend. We've already got double starport in the main base. Four racks production going up to five now. Plus one is done. Plus one armor is just about to finish. That's kind of a key point in this build is when the plus one armor finishes... You're going to trade so much better against Lurkers that might be out. Because they do take three hits instead of just two. There are positions that you can break that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. 11 meters in the stack. A few more flying around here. Euro has full saturation in the top left-hand corner now. Done it very, very well. 39 drones up there. But Bishop is moving into position. He's trying to get up here. To maybe break this spot, it'll have to be Hero fighting from the high ground with the Lurkers waiting for... Or with the Mutas waiting for the Lurkers to spawn. He gets onto the ramp. Perfectly done here. I believe that is going to block. It's a little bit hard on the reverse ramp to block a ramp like this, but... I think he's done it correctly in this case. Coming in here, Hero. Utilizing that egg plus the Mutas to deal a bit of damage. To these Marines, the Lurker Egg is getting a little bit low. Is uh, not willing to dive forward any further with this Lurker. I thought he could place it right there. And maybe do a little bit more damage. Looks like the Nidus Worm is done though. The Nidus Canal is finished. And as more Lurkers come up, it'll be an impossible task to break up this ramp. So Bishop will be forced back. Very nicely done here by Hero. 
I think maybe if he'd come forward a little bit more, he might have gotten targeted down by the Marine pack, but if you can get just within range here, you can start to deal damage to those Marines, force them back a little bit more, make it a bit harder. Hero just went the safer path though, choosing to keep that Lurker back and wait for reinforcements. And it turns out pretty okay for him. Now Bishop comes up here towards the top left. He's gonna have two Radiates here in a moment. And so two Lurkers will be killed immediately. It will be burned down. Oh, he stacks him up just in time. Very nicely done by Hero, realizing that this is coming. Drops an Irradiate. Just like some of the reinforcements getting picked off back at home. We do have Science Vessel in the natural. Coming up this ramp. Oh, D-Matrix on that one Marine. Lings are going to come up here, though. He's targeting on the ramp. This is perfectly done by Hero. He's holding this off. Look at that kill. Oh, my goodness. So many dead Marines there at the top of that ramp. And with the... Scourge coming through from behind and the Lurkers coming out of the Nidus. He absolutely wrecks this attack. Hero doing a beautiful job cleaning up Bishop right there. That was an amazing set of spines that broke the back of Bishop as he was coming up that ramp. The targeting there was sublime. You really do, if you're going for that D Matrix play, want to drag the spines away from the big groups coming up the ramp, but Hero, since he was paying attention, he was not targeted onto that Dematrix Marine. Instead, fully focused on preventing more Marines from getting up that ramp, and he manages to stop it. Now two dropships are out on the field, and mass expansion time has come for Bishop. Bishop is not containing, though, Hero uh, out on the map, right? He's not contained over in this top left-hand corner, so we could just see Defilers, Lurkers, and Lings walk straight over towards Bishop's natural. He's going to try to get a drop going into the main base. What is here and available for Hero? Two Scourge and two Mutas is all that he's got. Can he get in there and deal big damage right now? Try to bring himself back into this game because he is definitely behind at this point. You can see that Hero has no troubles, no worries right now. Aside from these drops, he's going to be getting into his fourth base very quickly. He's already killed a bunch of Marines and Medics. And of course, Science Vessels have gone down en masse. Are we going to see these dropships moving northward? No, we do not. That is unfortunate for Hero. This drop play may indeed get in there and deal some massive damage. Well, let's see what happens. He's gonna go ahead and hit the front at the same time as he flies in with the drops. One dropship likely to go down immediately. Nice dodge there, very nice dodge. He doesn't keep the, the uh, dropship moving though, unfortunately. So one of the drops gets wiped out pretty handily uh, by a hero. Now going after the Nidus, great move there. Bishop getting in even though he's been plagued. And most of his army is gonna get taken out. Well, that sunken colony finishing up actually wipes this, but he gets in, he kills some drones, he interrupts the mining time, and he has one dropship remaining. So he could refill that and try to get back up into that top left-hand corner main. He needs to do something right now because he does not have a fourth base online. He hasn't made that big transition yet. He's adding on more barracks now, and getting ready for that late game, but he's at 48 workers on just three bases. He's gonna be mining out pretty quickly. He's gotta get something done here. He's gotta move in. And he's starting to pressure over into this fourth base. A Little bit of that eraser trick, trying to pick off some of these lings underneath. But Scourge come through, killing off one of the vessels. Pretty annoying stuff there for Bishop. He's gonna try to continue to eraser and irradiate down as many lurkers as possible to try and break through. Here comes a Defiler. Defiler from behind as well. Doesn't get a Plague down. He does not have energy for Plague. We've got, oh, there it is. He's got a Plague from the top, from the north here on these Marine Medic. Now, this is not a standard Terran versus Protoss. Generally, what you'll see is a big Terran army spread out in front of each of these openings. But right now, Hero has free reign. He could move out from this position, loop around and try to hit some of these bases, even make his way over towards the natural of the Terran player if Bishop isn't 
uh, really careful out on the map. We've got a dropship coming in over here as Scourge go for the kill on some of these vessels. There's the drop landing inside the main. Can he actually get the Nidus Canal? I think it is already connected. So Hero will be able to pop through a bunch of units. Unfortunately, very unfortunately for Bishop, he wasn't paying attention to this. And so he was not able to shoot down that Nidus Canal before all those units popped through. A big plague went down on all of this, so the medics have zero energy. That dropship was taken out as well. And Bishop is starting to throw down his fourth base. He's got plus three, I imagine. Plus three is done. No plus two armor just yet. But plus two armor and plus two. Uh, plus three armor and plus two attack are on the way right now for hero so hero is going to hit this critical uh timing where he's got chitinous plating when he's got ultralist speed plus three armor and plus two attack it's going to be very scary will bishop have what it takes to handle this next upcoming attack i think it's unlikely He's just now got his fourth base online. He's putting out more dropships. Going up to another three drops. He's trying to break his way into the natural. Wait a second. How did he do this? He's diving right in on this top left-hand corner natural. And he's doing a ton of damage. A big misstep here from Hero. We'll have to picture and picture the initial part of that battle to see exactly what went wrong. Because there's not even a, a vessel over here. So how did he manage to break through that position? He's killed the fourth base. Hero falling apart right now. He's got to pull himself together. He has the Nidus Canal, but only Lings are popping out in the top up. I haven't even seen an Ultralisk yet. We've almost got plus three armor. Kiteness plating is just about done. Where are these Ultralisks? There's three on the way, but Hero is fighting a losing battle if he can't get a fourth gas online right now. Dropships coming into the main base once again. He's going to hit this all important tech in the main and there's not much that hero can do about it his scourge are gonna get gunned down oh he does get one dropship at least but this is so many marines up in this main base hero defending from high ground he should be able to keep that alive but he'll lose his spire he may end up losing his evolution chamber this is the all important one right here this evolution chamber must live it must survive where are the ultras that popped out earlier they're not here. They're over at the top left, and they are not going to be able to bring Hero back in this game. Bishop takes a big win over one of the greatest Zerg players in the world right now, Hero. Such a scary opponent to go up against, but Bishop finds a way in under that armor. He finds a chink in that defense, breaks through, and takes a sweet, sweet win here. Excellently done. I thought that Hero was going to win this game for sure. I even want to go back and just see when it all started to fall apart here for myself. I will picture and picture it later. But I'm just shocked that that ended up happening to Hero. Of all people, his defense is so strong. It's so good. This is one of the hardest points in the game. For any Zerg player trying to defend like this, as the Terran is just all over you, laying down Siege and throwing in Irradiates over and over and over again, usually Hero's the one player I expect to just be able to hold everything back without too much trouble, but he got busted. Look at that. He hops the Defiler through and sends it in this direction. That's when he casted the... Pretty nice plague on these uh, vessels, but he didn't have the Defiler over in this position to keep himself alive. And I think this is the point where Bishop scans and he realizes that there's not a lot here. There's the one Defiler popping out, but he immediately surrounds and kills that, just hitting the trigger, hitting that stim button and running in the moment that he scans and sees the point of vulnerability. Very nice play here by Bishop. Oh, there was a drop over here as well. I completely missed out on that. I'm not even sure where that came from. I'll have to picture and picture that as well. So much going on in these positions in a game like this. ZVT is craziness, guys, but that's just the way it goes. Terran players have gotten better and better 
at making the situations wild and difficult to contend with. Oh, what a great game. Awesome to see Hero and Bishop duke it out like this. I'll be looking forward to more Bishop games in the future, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this cast, and I'll see you in the next one.